Number one gives us a population P of migrating butterflies satisfies this equation where W is the number of weeks since they began their migration. Complete the table of the population after the different number of weeks. So if we plug in zero here, then we're just going to get 100,000. If we plug in one, then we're going to end up with 80,000. And you can, you know, if you're not sure how to type this in your calculator, you can just type in um, four divided by five and get that as a decimal. And four divided by five as a decimal is 0 0.8. So then you can just be typing in 0.8 to the first power times 100,000, 0.8 to the second power um, times 100,000, which gives us 64,000, um, 0.8 to the third times 100,000, which gives us 5,000, or sorry, 51,200, and then to the fourth power, which gives us 40,960. Then it wants us to graph this. Um, so we've got kind of 10 um, high. So we've got 10 dashes up. So I'm going to count by 100,000s, or sorry, by 10,000s, so that I can get up to 100,000 at the top. So each of these is 10,000. And then this way it will just be, I'll just count by ones. So one week, two, three, four, five, six weeks. So then we can plot these. So at zero, um, in our table, we were at 100,000. At one, we were at 80,000. At two, we were at 64,000. So this is 60 and 70,000. So we'll be almost right in the middle there. At three, we were at 51,000. So just above 50,000. If we kept, uh, then, or sorry, then number four, or after four weeks, we're at 40,900. So about here, just over 40,000 again. Then if we kept going at um, 50, after five weeks, we'd be at like 32,000 or something. So it'd be about here. Um, and then you could keep going. Let me figure out these actual numbers. Um, so we'd be at 32,768 at five weeks. And then if you did it again, you'd be at 26,200, so just above halfway here. But so then those would be those dots. Then it wants to know what's the vertical intercept of the graph. So that was right here at 100,000. So that's going to be um, 0, 100,000, right, was our intercept there. And that represents the initial butterfly population. Then it says, when does the butterfly population reach about 50,000? And we saw that in our table um, right here is pretty close to 50,000. And that's after three weeks. Then number two, the graph shows the amount of chemical in a water sample is decreasing exponentially. Find the coordinates of the points labeled A, B, and C. So it's decreasing exponentially, which means it's decreasing by the same factor. So we want to compare these Y values, and it's decreasing by a factor. So we're going to take the um, new measure divided by the original, and that'll tell us um, kind of the growth factor. And so this gives us uh, 0 0.8. So that means it has 80% of its value left, or you can think of it as decreasing by 20%. So this is decreasing by 20%, meaning it's retaining or keeping 80%. So then we can just take 80% of um, 800. So we can just do 0 0.8 times 800. That'll give us our next value of 640 for this one. So this one's going to be 2 and then 640. Then we can take that times 80% again. 
and that will give us 512. So then this B is going to be 3 and 512. And then we can take 512 times the 0.8 again and get 409.6 for that last one. So at 4, we'd have 409.6. Number three, the graph shows the amount of chemical in a water sample at different times as it was first measured. Select all statements that are true. So A says the amount of chemical in the water is decreasing exponentially. And it looks like it could be, right? But we don't have any numbers to these different dots. Um, so we can't actually tell um, if it's decreasing exponentially or not. So it looks like it, but we're not sure. The amount of chemical in the water sample is not decreasing exponentially. Again, we don't know. It could be or it could not be. There's no numbers on there. So option C says it's not possible for us to tell, which is true. I mean, we can tell it's not increasing exponentially, right? So if this had said increasing, we could tell that, that it's not doing that. But we can't tell whether, whether or not it's decreasing exponentially. When it was first measured, there were 2,000 milligrams of chemical, okay? So first measured is the initial amount. We can see that that dot is right on 2,000, so this is true. And then E, after four hours, okay, so here's four hours, there's 100 milligrams. So it looks like it could be, but it doesn't, again, we don't have actual numbers. It's not on a spot, so it's approximately 100 but we don't know for sure. So the only two we know for sure are C and D. Number four, the graph shows the amount of chemical in a patient's body at different times measured in hours since the level, levels were first checked. Could the amount of this chemical in the patient be decaying exponentially? So now we've got some numbers. So now we're going to take a look and see what the decay factor is from here to here meaning that you're going to take the new amount or the second amount divided by the first amount. And that's going to tell us that we have 0.6 um, remaining or 60% remaining. So then we're going to look at the next one and see if that factor is the same. So then 360 divided by 600. And we get that that factor remaining is 60% again. So this means we have 60% remaining, right? So that's 0.6 as a percent. So that's how much is remaining. That means that this is the amount is decreasing by 40%. So we're losing 40% of the chemical each time, which means that there's 60% remaining. The height of a plant is measured in millimeters is seven and it doubles each week. So it starts at seven and then it doubles each week for four weeks. Select all expressions that represent the height. So not this first one, cause it's gonna be seven and then times two, times two, times two, times two, cause it's gonna double week one, week two, week three, week four. Um, and repeated multiplication is not multiplication. So when we have multiplication repeated, that's going to be an exponent. Four times two would mean we added two four times. So this next one will be good. Doubling four different times. Um, C, not good because we didn't start at two and multiply by seven. Okay, we, we started at seven. D would be good starting at seven, multiplying by two four times. Um, and then E, not good. Number six, the number of people who have read a new book is 300 at the beginning of January. The number of people who have read the book doubles each month. Use the information to complete the table. So the initial amount of people that read it was 300. Then it's going to double to 600, double again to 1,200, again to 2,400, and then again to 4,800. Um, then B asks us, what do we notice about the difference in the number of people who have read the book each month? So the difference is if we subtract these, right? So the difference is 
Um, 600 minus 300 gives us a difference of 300 here. The difference here, 1200 minus 600 is 600. Okay, difference here is 1200. Difference here is 2400. And so what are we noticing? Um, you notice that these differences are, are different each time, right? So they're not the same. And it actually like goes up each time. So the difference in the two numbers, it does not stay the same. Then it says, what do you notice about the factor by which the numbers change? And so factor is what do you multiply by? And so if you don't know, which we do because we filled in this table, it's doubling each time, but you would do the new one divided by the original to get your factor. So then here we'd be doing, um, for this one, you'd be doing 1200 divided by 600 to get two again, okay, two again, two again. So we see that the factor stays the same. Um, and specifically, it's a factor of two. Number seven, solve each system of equations. So you can do this a couple different ways. You could use graphing software. You could do substitution where you solve for one of the variables and plug it in, or you can do elimination. So I'm going to do um, elimination. So I'm going to try and get the variables to be opposites, and they already are, in fact, in this one. Because we've got a 1y and we've got a negative 1y. So that's going to be good. So what we're going to do then is just add these together. So I'm just going to take um, the two equations here and I'm going to add them together. So x plus negative 3x is negative 2x. 1y plus negative 1y is 0. And then 2 plus 5 is 7. Then to solve for x, I would just divide by negative 2. So then we get that x equals negative 3.5. Then we can just plug that back into either of these two equations. I'm going to plug it into the top one. So negative 3.5 plus y equals 2. So then I'll add 3.5 to both sides. And we'll get that y equals 5.5. So you can write this, um, whoops, you can write this as an ordered pair. And so that would be the ordered pair, negative 3.5 comma 5.5 for that first set. So this is the solution for this first system. Um, then our second system, again, I'm going to do um, elimination here. And I'm just going to get, I already see a positive y term here and a negative y term here. So I'm just going to get those to be opposites of each other. And I can do that fairly easily just by multiplying everything by 2. So 2 times a half is just 1x. 2 times 2y is plus 4y. And then 2 times negative 13 is negative 26. So then I'll just add these equations together. So 1x plus 1x is 2x. Negative 4y plus 4y is 0. 8 minus 8 plus negative um, 26 is um, negative 18. So then we'll divide by 2, and we get that x equals negative 9. Then we plug that into either of the two equations. So I'm going to plug it into this bottom one. So we have negative 9 minus 4y equals 8. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides and get negative 4y equals 17. Divide by negative 4, and we get that y equals negative 4.25. And so then you can write this as an ordered pair. So your x was negative 9, your y is negative 4.25, and then that's the solution to this second system.